Do you ever stay up at night thinking about the Naruto universe and how everything we might know about the Naruto universe might be wrong and fake? Y you don't? Now, come on, like, like, look, be real. Like, you stay up all night, you're tossing and turning, your girlfriend's like, oh, why can't you sleep? And you're like, oh, I just, I think the Otsutsuki were responsible for the death of multiple clans and we don't know about it. I stop. For, for sure, you, that happens to you like at least once a week, right? All right, maybe that's a little over the top. Maybe you guys get to bed easier than I do. But like something simple where you're like brushing your teeth and you realize you've been staring in the mirror thinking about how the Senju, the Uzumaki, and the Uchiha have all gone missing even though they were the last remnants of Hagoromo who could be an Otsutsuki god's bloodline. And you're just sitting there thinking about how it's incredibly odd that all of the descendants of the Otsutsuki have gone missing except for the Hyuga, but the Hyuga serve an innate purpose to the Otsutsuki in the form of the Tensei gone. And so you've been standing there brushing your teeth for a half hour, your toothbrush, has gone flat your gums are bleeding but you're so lost in thought you don't realize that i know that's a universal experience i can relate to the common man i am the common man but maybe you guys aren't like me maybe you don't stay up all night thinking about naruto theories which is probably why i got the platform to tell you about my insane thoughts and my most recent insane thought led me down a path that i've been poking at for a while see a couple of days ago i released a video saying the otsutsuki's destroyed the uzumaki a video where i talked about the possibility of the otsutsuki using omnipotence and their mass amount of power to wipe out the Uzumaki. And the reason that I listed that the Otsutsuki would go out of their way to destroy the Uzumaki on Earth is because the Otsutsuki identified that the only real threat to them on Earth were people who would be able to seal them away. Something that may or may not have already happened with the likes of the Reaper Death Seal. As theories have been around for years that the Reaper Death Seal is somehow tied to the Otsutsuki, especially when you consider the fact that the Shinigami that appears after using the Reaper Death Seal not only has the characteristic white skin and horns of an Otsutsuki, but also has the ability to completely rip souls out of a person's body and pull them into a separate dimension. Techniques that we've only ever seen tied to the Rinnegan and the Otsutsuki. However, I realized somewhat recently that I didn't go nearly far enough with that theory. See, while yes, the eradication of the Uzumaki clan is a gigantic question mark in the Naruto universe, it's not the only one. You see, because the Uzumaki clan aren't the only clan to be eradicated in mystery, as the exact same circumstances can be applied to the most closely related clan to the Uzumaki, the Senju. But to take it even one step further than that, the Uchiha clan, whose eradication is very well documented, is also an incredibly powerful clan that tied its roots back to Hagoromo that was eradicated for really no reason. And yet the powers of all three of these clans have been shown to, time and time again, undermine the abilities of either the Otsutsuki or their tailed beasts. And this makes sense in the grand scheme of things when you consider the fact that all three of these clans tie their roots back to Hagoromo. So what's going on here? Well, I've spent the last couple of days trying to figure out the answer to just that question. And I feel as though I may have found it. So today we're talking the Otsutsuki killed the Senju Uzumaki and Uchiha. But before we get to talking on anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you're feeling particularly generous, go ahead and follow my other channel, where instead of talking about Naruto and Boruto, I talk all other anime and manga, The Weeb Commander. Or if you want to see me try to bring real life challenges to the anime world, go ahead and follow the brand new channel that I created with Stephen Heat, Chris Barnett, and Danny Mata called Anime IRL. Or if you want to hear me talk about anime and manga, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Talk is Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime and manga this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Let's get into all that today. We're going to talk about our favorite recurring sponsor to the page, BetterHelp. Listen, I put myself under a lot of stress. As it currently stands, I'm person numero uno on four separate YouTube pages, which means a lot of my day is dedicated to working, which means a lot of my mental health is dedicated to work. Now, this isn't the world's greatest setup for my brain. This means I often attribute the majority of my feeling of self-worth to how well work is going across these four separate channels. And while for a long time I would let myself dictate how much I was worth based off how well my videos were doing, fortunately with the help of better help and the therapist that I've been connected to, I've found positive ways to reinforce force my self-worth that have nothing to do with work. See, because that's exactly what BetterHelp is meant to do. Connect you with a licensed therapist, usually in less than 48 hours. And that licensed therapist is going to have experience listening to people like you. Because at the beginning of your BetterHelp journey, all you have to do is fill out a questionnaire that helps BetterHelp better establish a connection between you and a therapist who's trained to listen to people like you and give you unbiased advice. And staying in touch with that therapist is as easy as it gets. As you can stay in touch with your therapist over the phone, video call, or even just messages whatever makes you comfortable. So what are you waiting for? Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist tailored to your needs, all from the comfort of your home. So go to betterhelp.com slash nchammer, click the link in my description, or use code nchammer at checkout to enjoy a special discount during your first month. So what are you waiting for? It's time we start getting those mental 
reps in. All right, it's time to craft my masterpiece. So before we get to diving too deep on this theory, let's do a little bit of recap to set the stage for what we're gonna be talking about today. And that recap is gonna take us 1,000 years into the past. You see, because it was roughly about 1,000 years ago that Kaguya, supposedly by herself according to the Naruto lore, but with the help of Ishiki according to the Boruto lore, came down to the earth looking for a divine tree. Now the discrepancy between Naruto and Boruto here is never truly established as to whether or not there was a tree on Earth prior to Kagi and Ishiki showing up, or if that was grown using the lower half of Ishiki. The retcon, so far as we know it, really just includes Ishiki into the fold of Kagi's story that we heard during the Fourth Great Shinobi World War. As all we ever really heard from Ishiki as it pertained to Kagiya was that when they got to Earth, Kagiya surprised him and jumped him, tore him asunder, and then took the power of the chakra fruit for herself. Now, this obviously runs counter to what Kagiya told us during the Fourth Great Shinobi World War, which was that Kagiya came down to Earth by her herself and lived amongst humanity for a couple of years and then once humanity turned on her she consumed the chakra fruit and that's what gave her power and power to her children Hagoromo and Hammer. Now as to which one of these tellings is more truthful we can probably assume it's the Boruto telling. It's more recent and Ishiki has no incentive to lie and tell this story in fact he has incentive to lie and not tell this story because the story that Ishiki tells us ends with him ripped in half and as an incredibly prideful being that can't be a story he enjoys telling. But Kaguya who wanted humanity to believe that she was some kind of savior or god would most likely lie about the part where she came down with somebody else with the intention of destroying this planet but ripped him in half so that she could steal all the power for herself. However, there inherently has to be truthful bits taken from both of these stories. See, because we cannot fully retcon Naruto's telling of Kaguya's arrival on Earth because she, after all, had children. And while it's never shown in the manga her husband or her concubine or just the father of her children, Kaguya living amongst the humans and falling in love with a man by the name of Tenma is shown in a filler arc during the fourth great shinobi world war and that's where humanity's problems arose see because prior to kaguya descending down to the earth and deciding to have children humanity didn't have chakra they were a weak inconsequential species that only used primal weapons such as bows and spears to fight their wars however after kaguya descended down to the planet that all changed see because while not every human being on earth is a descendant of kaguya and hagoromo and ashra and indra hagoromo being born on earth is a watershed moment for humanity because while large part of the humanity that we deal with in the Naruto universe does tie their lineage back to Hagoromo. Hagoromo, whether you're related to him or not, is the reason that humanity has chakra. But that's not all that was crazy about Hagoromo. See, Hagoromo, so far as we know, was the first person to ever become a Ten Tails Jinchuriki and control the process. See, because while obviously Kaguya absorbed the Divine Tree and became the Ten Tails because of that, Hagoromo was the first person to seal the Ten Tails inside of himself and use that power in an actionable way. And this gave Hagoromo a bunch of powers that are still kind of in a ballpark of their own even now in Boruto. See, whether it was creation of all things, which appeared to be a watered-down version of omnipotence, the handing out of Ninchu to every single person on Earth, which eventually created Chakra, and all humanity, or the fact that after his death, he, much like an Otsutsuki god, ascended to his own dimension, where he now exists indefinitely. See, because the more you think about it, the more you realize that Hagoromo is more like an Otsutsuki god than he is basically anything else in the Naruto universe. See, Hagoromo was not only able to abandon his body after his death and exist in some dimension somewhere between Earth and the Pure Lands, but he was also able to, as an other dimensional figure, grant his power to living human beings like Naruto and Sasuke. He was able to reach out to all of the Kages in the Pure lands and draw their souls to a singular location and so much more everything that Hagoromo's ever really done points in the direction of him being about as close to an Otsutsuki god as we've ever seen and this point makes even more sense when you consider the fact that Hagoromo is known as the god of shinobi and therefore the earth has always been in a rather weird position and really the weirdest of the position all ties back to Kakia. so far as we know the only Otsutsuki in the history of the Otsutsuki to sleep with another race and essentially sow her chakra into the entirety of that race's historical bloodlines, making not only a wildly powerful globe, but also a very enticing globe to consume if you're an Otsutsuki. However, rather interestingly, there's only four bloodlines that tie their roots directly back to Hagoromo and Kaki, and those are the Uchiha, the Senju, the Uzumaki, and the Hyuga. And while there is an argument to be made that Kinkaku and Ginkaku tie their roots back to Hagoromo, we don't know if they ever had kids. We don't know their last name. We don't know if they come from a clan. We don't know anything about their lineage whatsoever. All that we know is that in the modern day ninja world, four clans tied their roots back to Hagoromo and Hamura. Rather interestingly, the three clans that tied their roots back to Hagoromo, the Uchiha, the Senju, and the Uzumaki, no longer exist, therefore leaving the only clan on Earth that can tie its roots back to Kaguya 
being the Hyuga. And that's interesting because the Hyugas aren't a threat to the Otsutsuki. See, well, obviously the Hyuga's characteristic Byakugan ties its root back to the Otsutsuki and Hamura and Kaguya, as Hagoromo gained access to the Sharingan and Rinnegan from Kaguya, while Hamura simply got the Byakugan. The Hyuga, while they claim to be the strongest clan in Konoha, have never been anything even close to that. And while they, well, now might be the strongest clan in Konoha, I'd argue that the strongest clan in Konoha is probably the Otsutsuki. And before that, it was the Uzumaki. So so no, in actuality, the Hyuga clan has never once been the strongest clan in Konoha. Okay, maybe they were the strongest clan in Konoha during Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. Post the Uchiha's death. But only for that really small window before Naruto got really strong. But isn't it interesting that of all of the clans that can tie its lineage back to Kaguya, the only one that didn't stand a legitimate threat against the Otsutsukis is the one that's still alive. And it's not even just that the Hyugas aren't a threat against the Otsutsukis, the Hyugas can actually help the Otsutsukis get stronger. See, because it was revealed to us in Naruto the Last that if a pure-blooded Hyuga set of Byakugan is transplanted into an Otsutsuki, that Otsutsuki has the ability to awaken the Tensei God, an ocular dojutsu that seems on par with something like a Rini Sharingan. And thus, out of all of the clans that tie their roots back to Kaguya, the only clan left alive are the clan that can help the Otsutsuki, which makes it seem as though that the Otsutsuki had something to do with the eradication of the three other Kaguya-based clans. And there's a fair amount of evidence to prove this. See, because, well, obviously, all four of these clans existed for roughly a thousand years. It's right about when people from these clans start to establish that they would be lethal against Otsutsukis that the clans started disappearing. What do I mean by that? Take the Senju, for example. The Senju were not only one of the most populous, but also one of the most prosperous clans in the Naruto world for a thousand years during the Warring States period. And while they were embroiled in a constant and endless and bloody battle against the Uchiha, it's a battle that they won. And it's a battle that they won because of an Ashura reincarnate by the name of Hashirama. But why was Hashirama so incredibly strong? Was it his healing factor, his mass amount of chakra, or his wood release? Well, one can make an argument for any of these three being the actual answer, but when it boils down to it, really what made him stronger than anybody else in the Uchiha, and therefore strong enough to defeat the whole clan, and unify the Uchiha and the Senju to create Konoha was a combination of his sage mode and his wood release. And really, if it came down to which of those two made him stronger, I'd have to go with wood release. But Hashirama had wood release for a big part of his life. And for a big part of his life, he only ever used that wood release against other people. However, after the founding of Konoha, when Madara realized that the Uchiha were going to be suppressed by the Senju, Madara abandoned the village and went to look for Kurama, an entity so powerful that Madara believed it would be enough to overcome the overwhelming strength of Hashirama. And therefore, it's in the ensuing battle between Madara and Hashirama that was so violent it created the final valley that Hashirama realized that Wood Release has the ability to suppress the chakra of tailed beasts. But since Hashirama was the first ever wood release user, and certainly the first ever wood release user to use wood release on a tailed beast, when Hashirama figured this out, so did the rest of the world. This was new information. And ironically, it's not until this moment when Hashirama founded Konoha and started using wood release to catch all the tailed beasts to sell to the other villages that the Senju started disappearing. See, like we established, the Senju were one of the most prosperous and powerful clans in the world prior to the creation of Konoha. However, for some reason, between the generations of Hashirama and Naruto, the Senju have all but disappeared in Konoha, resulting in the last remaining Senju being Tsunade, the granddaughter of Hashirama. And since we have literally no explanation for where the Senju went, the explanation that the Otsutsuki identified that the Senju bloodline possibly creating another wood release user of the same strength of Hashirama would be able to lead to humanity battling back against the Otsutsuki and the Tentails would probably serve as enough reason for the Otsutsuki to identify that the Senju need to be eradicated. And with the power of Omnipotence, that's within their grasp. See, a deluded version of Omnipotence used by Ada was able to make the entire world believe that Boruto was Kawaki and vice versa. It was able to make every single human being that Ada ever interacted with outside of the confines of Sarada, Sumire, Boruto, and other Otsutsukis fall in love with Ada immediately. And she's only able to make her subconscious desires a reality through the usage of her Omnipotence. While other more practiced users of Omnipotence who have consumed multiple planets worth of chakra fruits are able to co 
decode entire universes with this power. And therefore, if I was an Otsutsuki who was one day making a plan of turning Earth into a chocolate fruit, but identified that there was a problematic group of people who would someday have the ability to suppress the power of the Ten Tails using wood release, I'd probably get rid of them. And the fact that the Senju disappearance has one, never been explained, and two, doesn't happen until Hashirama starts using wood release on tailed beasts, seems the point of the direction that this might be a possibility. And this argument is only strengthened by the fact that Moegi, the only other natural born wood release user in Naruto history, was one of the few people bitten by a claw grime and turned into a Shinji. As if the claw grimes that were just created from the Ten Tails were actively searching for a wood release user to convert into a Shinju. As if to either bring the power over to their side or eliminate the possibility of wood release being used against the Ten Tails. But it's not just the Senju. See, because the Uzumaki also disappeared without any real trace or explanation. But what if the explanation is the Reaper Death Seal? See, like I've already touched on in this video, it's been theorized multiple times that the Shinigami that's released when somebody uses the Reaper Death Seal is in actuality just an Otsutsuki. As really the only entities who've ever been able to identify as godlike in power outside of Hagoromo have been the Otsutsukis. Ties into the fact that the Shinigami that's released from Reaper Death Seal has white hair like the Otsutsukis and horn. The similarities seem too glaring to ignore. But what if in actuality, the real reason that the Uzumaki were wiped out is because the strength of their Fuinjutsu allowed them to seal an Otsutsuki who came down to Earth, possibly Shibai's partner, into an eternal servitude role where in exchange for somebody using a Jutsu, the Shinigami would get access to their soul and the soul of whoever they were using the Jutsu on. And therefore, because the Otsutsukis identified that the Fuinjutsu of the Uzumaki stands a legitimate threat against their lives, they decided that just like with the Senju, the Uzumaki he also needed to be eradicated. I mean, these are two distantly related bloodlines that are manifesting powers so powerful that they'd be able to take on Otsutsukis. And this makes sense because both the Senju and the Uzumaki are essentially distant relatives of the Otsutsuki clan. Years of battle and the fact that Kaguya's blood pumps through them have made them strong enough that a group of them would be able to fight against an Otsutsuki invasion should the Otsutsukis ever come to take over the chakra that Kaguya lent out to this planet. And ironically, once again, the Uzumakis are not eradicated as a clan until it's established that the 8 Trigram Seal is able to seal away tailed beasts like Kurama. I mean, these are clans that existed through thousands of years of war, disappearing with no explanation the second that humanity gets civilized, and only after it's identified that their abilities allow them to suppress tailed beast chakra. But the oddities don't stop there. See, because the Uchiha clan was also eradicated, and while we have an explanation for why the Uchiha clan was eradicated, that explanation is ironically Black Zetsu, who is the will of Kaguya. Black Zetsu manipulated the stone tablet to make Madara buy into the Eye of the Moon plan, and it was Madara's descent from the village that breeded a deep-seated mistrust in the Uchiha clan from all the inhabitants of Konoha. And ironically, it was what Madara did after he left the village that started this distrust. Because when it was established that the Sharingan had the ability to control a tailed beast, inhabitants and the Konoha higher-ups realized that the average Uchiha stands a legitimate threat against the health of the entirety of Konoha. And while Hashirama was able to suppress Kurama when Madara was using him as a giant horse, when it was once again established on the night of Naruto's birth that Kurama could be controlled with the Sharingan, that was essentially the end of the Uchiha clan. And without Black Zetsu pushing Madara in the direction of using Kurama to battle against Tashirama, Obito never would have figured out how to use Kurama on the night of Naruto's birth in the first place. And thus, there's already a track record of the Otsutsuki being responsible for the eradication of bloodlines that came from Kaguya. What's even wilder is that it doesn't end there. The Kaguya clan, you know, the one that Kimimaru came from, were descendants of Kaguya. That's why they had the Shikatsumyaku, which was essentially the Timu version of Ash All Killing Bone. The Kaguya clan were also eradicated by the Hidden Mist Village, which at the time of the Kaguya clan's eradication, when Kimimaru was a child, was under control of who, you ask? Obito, who was unwittingly enacting the will of Madara and Black Zetsu. Every clan that ties its roots back to Kaguya has been eradicated, save the Hyuga. And we've seen how Otsutsukis have responded to Otsutsuki-based abilities in humans. Well, Momoshigi and Ishiki had a massive amount of disdain for Sasuke's Six Tome Rinnegan. As Sasuke's Six Tome Rinnegan was one of the reasons that Momoshigi was defeated and the only reason that Sasuke ever landed a hit on Ishiki. Well, I guess it was Jigen, but still. But not even just that. The first 
first opportunity that Momoshiki got, he took out Sasuke's six to my Rinnegan, proving that Momoshiki believed Sasuke's six to my Rinnegan to be a legitimate threat to his ability to take over the world. Now, Momoshiki aiming for Sasuke's six to my Rinnegan is a double whammy because it's one, an ability that ties his roots back to Kaguya, and two, an ability that was given to Sasuke by Hagoromo. And honestly, the death of all these clans has been massively advantageous to the Otsutsuki. See, because if the Otsutsuki are trying to weaken planet Earth to make it easier to take over whenever they decide to come on back, they've accomplished that goal. The current set of Kage are the weakest Kage we've ever seen. And yes, I'm aware with scaling, we could say that this is the strongest set of Kage we've ever seen because the majority of them were able to run the ones with the likes of Kinshiki and Momoshiki. But based off common sense, the knowledge of the universe, and everything outside of the Kinshiki Momoshiki fight against the five Kage, we can say that with Shikamaru currently leading Konoha as the Hokage, the five Kage we have are by far and away the weakest set of Kage we've ever seen in the ninja world. Garga taken out by Orishiki, couldn't defend Shinki against the Claw Grimes, and while he was able to react to and block an attack from Momoshiki, he got absolutely dog-walked immediately after doing that. Yes, Darui and Chojuro went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Kinshiki, and Korotsuchi threw some useful attacks in there as well. But currently, you cannot tell me and genuinely feel good about it that Chojuro is not the weakest Mizukage we've ever seen. That Korotsuchi is not the weakest Suchikage we've ever seen. Now, Gara is not the weakest Kazukage we've ever seen, but he's not as strong as he used to be. Or at least not as strong as he could be if he was still a Jinchuriki of Shukaku. Darui is absolutely the weakest Raikage we've ever seen, and Shikamaru is by far and away the weakest Hokage we've ever seen. And therefore, not only are all the clans that tie their roots back to Kagi and therefore should be producing some of the strongest ninja in the entire world eradicated, but all of the leaders of the five villages are the weakest they've ever been. Tie this into the fact that Jinchurikis now basically no longer exist, as Killer B is maybe the only real Jinchuriki left, and the fighting Earth forces are as weak as they have ever been. On top of this, there's been 20 years of peace, so Shinobi aren't as strong as they used to because they're not as practically trained as they used to be. And it gets crazier than this. Yes, we said the Hyuga still exist, right? But the Hyuga aren't the only clan that Hamura ever made as the Hyuga clan were the clan made by Hamura that Hamura left on the planet, but he brought disciples with him to the moon and made another massive clan there. A clan so large that they were able to split into two sides and fight gigantic wars against each other. And what's wild about Hamura's clan on the moon is that because they weren't full-blooded Hyugas, their Byakugans couldn't be used to create the Tenseiga. And therefore, once again, a lineage that ties its roots back to Kaguya was eradicated because it was no longer useful to the Otsutsuki. And this extends even to Toneri, because after the last, in the Boruto timeline, Toneri is actively sought out and taken care of by Orishiki, who sends him to another dimension with the Ryugu Palace crystal or something for 10,000 years. Every single clan that harnesses power directly from Kaguya's mistake of breeding with humanity is God, leaving only half-bloods like Naruto, Tsunade, Borto, Himawari, Sarada, and well, I guess Sasuke is a full-blooded Uchiha, and those who would be useful to have their dojutsus power up the Otsutsukis in the Hyugas. So what am I saying? Well, I'm saying that the Otsutsukis have had their eyes on the Naruto world for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and they have, from the shadows, slowly but surely been weakening human society to whittle out all Otsutsuki blood. And the more and more Otsutsuki blood that they're able to whittle away, the more jutsus they're able to eradicate from human society that would be able to work on them when they come to invade human society and take back the chakra that Kaguya unwittingly gave them. But Boruto and Kawaki, who are now full-blooded Otsutsukis and stand opposed to the Otsutsuki invasion, fly directly in the face of that goal. And if you can't get behind that as a story, well then I can't get behind you as a person because that is a lot of fun. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you believe the Otsutsuki have been meddling with human society for hundreds of years to wipe out the most powerful bloodlines or... Uh, do you think Kishimoto just needed to get rid of some of the strong characters so that we could have actual circumstances and problems pop up? Tell me in the comments below. And why you guys are down there, please, for me. Like the video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I get it. You can't have a bunch of Senju and Uzumaki and Uchiha running around because then uh, what would the problem ever be in Konoha? Just send your legions of incredibly strong ninjas to all the other villages to wipe them out. Somebody's got to get rid of the powerful guys, but it could have been the Otsutsuki.